Welcome back. This is the Life Forge Podcast, March of the Lich King card review. I am Adwikta, and it is mage time. Mage. There are actually some good mage cards. We just did, what, Demon Hunter? We did Druid. We did Hunter. It was all kind of like... Okay, well, mage actually has an A-tier card. All right? No joke. A-tier common card. So this one you're going to see a lot. I don't know if you're going to like it, um, but uh, you're going to see it a lot. And uh, assuming Mage is any good and played. Uh, and it's, it's, not, it's at least not horrible, like, to exist. A-tier cards are scary. They're not like caverns or anything, but they are like the backbone of like what you're building towards. So before we get to this A-tier card, though, we have to do a worse card because the A-tier card generates this card. So let's do the worst card first. This is a C-tier card. The C tier card is a common mage spell called Arcane Bolt. It is one mana. It is an arcane spell. It says deal two damage. Like the arcane shot, right? Like, but it's better than arcane shot because it has mana thirst eight. Deal three damage instead. So starting on turn eight, which is very far away from turn one, which is when it can normally be played, you'll be able to deal three damage. It's not a life-changing kind of like thing for this card. It's generally like for most of the game, you'll only be able to deal two damage, which is not very good because you look at something like Holy Smite and that deals three damage right off the bat. It can only damage a minion, but you're mostly using the stuff on minions anyway, right? So this is a C tier card. You'll take it over a Yeti, but it's not the best removal. Um, it's just kind of like a removal. Okay, so that's an Arcane Bolt. Cool, cool. Nice uh, little addition to the Mage Arsenal. Now for the Bomb. The Bomb is a 1 mana card. The 1 mana 1 2 common Mage card called Arcane Worm and Battle Cry. Add an Arcane Bolt to your hand. So this is essentially an almost on curve minion for 1 mana that then adds a arcane bolt into your hand and we already know what an arcane bolt is uh, like it's very simple but it is very powerful because remember what is like a c tier one mana card that's like a one mana one three but for losing one health on this like one mana card and that one health is not like super important you are getting an extra arcane bolt which is kind of a like an extra card if you think about um how this stuff normally works it's normally like a one mana one one that gives you an extra card this card is probably less good it's probably around the same power level as like say a random spell because it's not that great of a spell but it's also not that bad of a spell and there's no rng to it but you're getting a 1-2 body instead of a 1-1. One, one. And at a 1-1 one, one body, it's already something like a, a B or a, maybe even a B plus. So this one ends up being uh, uh, being a, uh, a A tier card. You could also play it at once. So then it's two mana for a 1-2 that deals two damage, which is also pretty damn good. Anyway, that is the mage offering. You can see it's like very flexible right like i don't think anyone's gonna see this a tier card and be like oh no the world is ending but it does give a lot of flexibility to what mages can do um now that's not it mages have another a tier card this one's epic though but we can talk about it now and this one is prismatic elemental prismatic elemental is a two mana one three elemental with a battle cry discover a spell from any class it costs one less so this is like Panda style, uh, like Pandarian Importer style. This is like Vizier style. Uh, and it's, it, it gets uh, extra bonus one mana less. It's just really good. There's not much to say about it. Thank God it's epic, so it doesn't show up that often. So after these two A tier cards, we also have two B plus tier cards. Like Mage is actually getting some power. Uh, one of the B-plus tier cards is Arc Splitter. 3 mana, 3-2. Three, Death Rattle. Add 2 Arcane Bolts to your hand. 
Yeah. Um, the three mana, three, two, that essentially gives you two cards on death, on death rattle. So for each stat that it loses, you get a card. That's real good. It's not quite as good as Arcane Worm. You don't get it immediately. Um, and at three mana, the stats you lose are kind of more meaningful than the stats you lose at one mana. Uh, you're like further off curve now. Three mana, three, two is not on curve at all. Two mana card. So it, it suffers a bit compared to the Arcane Worm, but still really good. And it's a rare card. But what it means is you're just going to end up with a lot of Arcane Bolts as Mage. And mages can do stuff with low-cost spells. Okay. The next one, uh, another B-plus tier card, another rare B-plus tier card, is Arcane Defenders. This is a terribly, terrible flavor card. I, like, I don't think this card should exist in me. It is an 8-mana Arcane spell that says Summon 2, 5, 6 Golems with Taunt and cannot be targeted by spells or hero powers. I don't know, mages can't taunt. That was their whole thing. Now mages can taunt. Like, why? Why would you do this? I, I just, I, I hate it from a flavor like perspective. I absolutely hate it. It's a B plus. It's quite powerful. Eight mana for two, five, six taunts is just, it's just good stats. Um, they also can't be like removed uh, with, uh, with direct damage like played from the hand because it can't be targeted. Ah. I just, I just hate the flavor. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not like OP or anything, but the flavor is, is, is terrible. You got to make sure, like, classes aren't defined by what they can't do. Letting mages taunt better, it's great for the mage. I can see mage players wanting it, but it's terrible for the game. Like, they need to stop doing stuff like this. All right, uh, another mage card, Vast Wisdom. This is the other rare one, three mana spell. Fast Wisdom, discover two spells that cost three or less, swap their costs. Um, better than Arcane Intellect. This one's a C plus. You get to discover two spells rather than draw two cards. Uh, the spells can only cost three or less, but swapping their costs is actually very interesting. Because unless you're discovering two three mana spells, obviously you want to discover bigger stuff, right? Because when you're using this, it's probably later on in the game, you want bigger things that you want, like higher costing stuff. But if you do a small one and a big one, like a one mana one and a three mana one, or even a two mana one and a three mana one, then you effectively get to play the, the swapped cost one that is at a discount earlier and then either not play or wait to the, like way later for, for the other one. Uh, and that's very useful. It lets you front get get some uh, additional tempo earlier that you don't have to pay back for many turns potentially. So depending on what situation you're in, you can do different things with it. It's like a very flexible card. Um. All right, and then one, oh, two, two more cards. One is. A common card, Magister's, uh, Magister's Apprentice, 2 mana, 3, 2. Your arcane spells cost 1 less. This is Sorceress's Apprentice, but <clears throat> rather than all spells, it only works on arcane spells. I don't know. Sorceress's Apprentice has been nerfed to be like 4 mana for like reasons. I think wild or something. Uh, I guess they think this is a more controlled version of it. I don't know. In Arena, it doesn't really matter that much. Sorcerer's Apprentice was okay in Arena. Magistrar's Apprentice is going to be a less good, but still okay. It's a C. Uh, and yes, this is a very good thing to play with Arcane Bolts, which are one mana and so therefore become free. Finally, we have a epic card um, that is uh, Energy Shaper. Energy Shaper is a four mana three five. Battle Cry: Transform all spells into your hand in your hand into ones that cost two more. They keep their original cost. So this one's a D. Four mana three fives are not good. Transforming spells in your hand into random spells. It is is also not good. Um, now, 
you do get a two mana discount on each of the spells, and that does make it a positive thing rather than a negative thing. Because without that two extra mana cost, it would just be a negative thing. Um, so now it becomes a positive thing, but it's not that positive. And how many spells are you really going to have in your hand? Like, it'd be nice to transform some of these arcane bolts away, but it's also not the end of the world if you kept them as arcane bolts. So there's probably some destructive synergy they're looking for with this, but in the arena, the value just kind of doesn't add up. It's It just... It doesn't do enough for the overall value. All right. Uh, so overall, mages have a pretty cohesive package surrounding arcane spells, arcane bolts, generating arcane bolts, right? Arcane worm generates arcane bolts. Uh, your your arc splitter generates arcane bolts. Your vast wisdom discovers spells, which could be arcane spells. Your magistrate's apprentice makes them all cheaper. It comes together. It kind of all synergizes with each other, and you could do things with it. They all have an offering bonus. You got something here. All right. The other three classes we were looking at, they don't really got anything. <laughs> not with this rotation. Uh, at least not with this rotation, how it works with these new cards. The new cards are just kind of random cards stapled onto whatever this class was going to be. But for Mage, this is a package. It's a cohesive package. I think it'll be interesting to play. It's not like game changing or anything. Arcane Bolts are not the most interesting thing that happened to Mage, but they do let you do stuff. Um, and uh, they let you pull off a bit more of your synergies a bit more often. And that feels good. And it's interesting to play. And it may be a little frustrating to play against. Uh, but what Arcane Bolts are very good at doing is giving a lot of flexibility. Um, and so that's what mages have. A lot of flexibility, generation, arcane spells, card generation, card uh, uh, card draw potentially. Uh, I guess no card draw. I guess just card generation uh, and arcane spells. So that's mage. Um, this is a class that I'm interested in trying out and playing, unlike the three classes before it. Uh, because these are, these are, it's, it's got a package. We'll see, uh, we'll see how well it comes together. It's not an insane package, right? But it does have one A-tier card and then one epic A-tier card in it. That's pretty good. Can't ask for that much more than that without it being OP. And speaking of OP, our next class is Paladin, which is usually OP. They, they haven't been OP for a couple of expansions, but historically they're always OP. And this, this is going to be one of those OP uh, expansions for Paladin. So... Definitely excited to uh, to talk about Paladin next. All right, no shout out for this one. We'll see you in Paladin. Mm, until then, this is Abuta. Okay. Oh my god, I didn't do the legendaries. I'm not redoing all that. I'm just going to do the legendaries as part of the paladins. <laughs> 